It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna to run down what you should know about the Canon C70. What it means to the photography and filmmaking world. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, I'm gonna break this uh, video down into four parts. We're gonna talk about the use of the camera, the performance, the price, and testimonials. Yeah, we're gonna get some voices featured from other people who have insight on using the Canon C70, one who has used it overseas in Ghana on a trip documenting a medical project, and one here in LA who uses it for corporate videos. We're gonna combine those testimonials kind of into the performance part to get an understanding of how it performs, and we're also gonna talk about uh, the use and the, the price. All right, today we're diving into the Canon C70 and I've dug quite a hole for myself and that's because I'm looking at moving from photography solely more into filmmaking and I'm gonna be working on a short film this year. I have the Canon EOS R, I have the Fuji X-T4, I can record externally to the Atomos Ninja 5 on both of those and that's probably my plan for this first short film. Uh, but for the future of my filmmaking adventures, I'm looking in the next six to 12 months in investing in a cinema camera. Now, whether that's something like the Canon uh, R5 or it's uh, something like the C100, 200, 300, a red Komodo, <laughs> Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K or 6K, there's a lot of options. The C70 is definitely a great new camera we need to talk about. And my take, my hot take is it's a bridge. It's a bridge between the Cinema EOS series and the EOS R series. Uh, we're gonna hear from a couple other voices, so they'll give us their perspective as well. Immediately, one feature you're gonna notice about this is it comes with the RF lens mount. So for me, having been an EOS R shooter, I love the RF lenses. I really think that's a pretty significant breakthrough, a pretty significant feature that Canon has offered the photography and filmmaking world. And I would love to stick with that. Now there's other camera companies coming on board like the Red Komodo, which has the RF mount. So to me, that's the camera companies outside of Canon recognizing the value of a mount that's a testament to the power of the RF mount. Let's quickly dive into some specs. It's worth a mention that besides the RF lens mount, there's a built-in ND filter system. So there's a full two, four, six, eight, and 10 stop internal ND filter system. That's a powerful and convenient feature to have. On a related note, Fuji recently released a firmware upgrade that allows the ND filter on the Fuji X100V to be used in video mode. It was previously only in photo mode. So helpful, and it's only four stops. Uh, whereas the Canon C70, a beast of a cinema camera, has 10 stops. But let's pause here for a moment. Cinema cameras are getting built-in ND filters. Street photography cameras like the X1RV are getting built-in ND filters. Wouldn't be that surprising to see this trend trickle into the mainstream mirrorless market. So your Sony's, your A7III's, your Canon's, your R5's may see that in the future. Keep that in mind. So here's some insight from Steven from Wood Island Media here in Los Angeles. I met Steven when I rented the Canon R5 from him last fall, and he's since picked up two Canon C70s, which have usurped his R5 spot in his lineup as B cams to the Canon C300 Mark IIs that he used. When I asked him what his experience has been with the C70, he said this, quote, it's the camera I've been waiting for, cinema quality, in a compact size packed with features, internal ND, autofocus, XLR, and he added that these mini XLR inputs offer higher quality audio options without the need for an external recorder. While Steven called out the compact size, we actually have video from Tony Mellinger of him using the C70 on his trip to Ghana uh, on a gimbal. So we'll stay tuned for that. Drum roll please, the C70 comes with a super 35 sensor. So it's not full frame, and the sensor is equipped to deliver 16 stops of dynamic range through a technology known as DGO, or dual gain output. We know the ESR has good dynamic range, delivering 14 stops of dynamic range, and that's, that's when you're using C-Log. And another point of comparison, the Red Komodo has 20 stops of dynamic range. So don't think 16 is the best you can get, but still, it's pretty darn good. This is a newly designed sensor from Canon, and it's notable for that reason, but more than just being new, DGO, or dual gain output, reads each pixel at two different gain levels. So 
One prioritizes saturation and highlight protection, so that's one signal. Then there's another that suppresses noise in the shadows, and those are united into uh, your, your memory storage where you're recording the file. So that's a powerful new sensor from Canon, and it allows you to film in 4K 120 frames per second. That's a high frame rate recording that's um, admirable. A lot of people are after that 120. You may know the Canon R5 has 4K 120. I've used it, and I was a huge fan of it. Actually, I got the camera overheating because I was in a botanical garden shooting and with that high frame rate setting I was just marveling and getting carried away and lo and behold in seven minutes there was overheating. So we're going to talk about overheating on the C70 later but it's not an issue so it's going to be a very short discussion. The Canon C70 has dual pixel autofocus. That's an amazing amazing feature to have and now Canon has released some sample footage and I'll put links to that in the description so you can check it out and I'll show you some right here. Now at this point, I think I'm favoring this camera. I'm just gonna say that, like it's a spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, I'm favoring this camera. I think pricing is what we need to talk about at this point. Uh, we know the camera is powerful. It's got the RF lenses. It's got the dyma dynamic range. It's got the built-in ND filters. And the price point is something that I uh, usually talk about at the end. But the price point is actually something that is even put this uh, in front of me as a consideration. Um, I'm actually considering it because of the price point. So shout out to all the rumor sites and speculators last uh, summer and fall. We heard the price tag was gonna be around 5,500. Um, I heard some people guess as low as 4,500 and up to 6,500. And 5,500 was a nice safe bet right in the middle. It was right on the money, literally. That's what the Canon C70 is going for. And I think it's a really good value for what you're gonna get. So what is this cinema flavored hybrid? It, it's a mirrorless camera. It's not the video stills hybrid like the R5 and R6. Um, so there are photography cameras first. C70 is a cinema camera, and it's really designed for people who want to maximize video output for the camera. So it's for professional videos. Now that being said, there's no IBIS. There's no in-body stabilization. So if you're thinking of your R5 and your R6 with all those stops of stabilization, you're not going to have that on the C70. However, if you're primarily a filmmaker, you're thinking about stabilization differently than a photographer or a hybrid shooter. If you're capturing video footage, filming, that implies your shutter is open for an extended duration. Your sensor is exposed to light over time in a different way than a still image. And because of the nature of this relationship to light, you're approaching exposing your sensor with some other solution for stabilizing. So you're planning your shots with tripods, with gimbals, with sliders equipment like that. However, I believe we'll get to the point where the cinema cameras come equipped with stabilization that rivals gimbals and steady cams. Just wait. Now here's the overheating issue that I wanted to mention on the R5. I experienced it myself, but on the C70 it has an air duct system, not something built into the R5. So it's going to have no video recording limits and you can shoot till your battery runs out. And that's a pretty amazing benefit. And then it's gonna have an adapter for EF lenses, of course. So uh, we're looking at this as a great solution for a budget independent filmmaker, like somebody uh, I aspire to be. So I told you about my project. I mentioned uh, I'm gonna write, uh, shoot a short film this year. My wife is a writer. She's written a kind of young adult no novella and I love it. I think the story is amazing. I've started on a screenplay version of it. So we're recruiting actors and actresses right now and we're gonna start shooting in the next few months. Now, the cinema camera purchase for me is probably six months out, so we don't have to worry about it for this project. It depends on COVID and how things go uh, working on this film project. All right, before we get to price, let's hear from Tony Mellinger, a fellow YouTuber and somebody who works full-time in the video production and filmmaking field for his day job. He also freelances for his own photography and filmmaking business, and I'm grateful to Tony, who has the following words to share. Uh, he's one busy guy, so I'm grateful he, he gave this info to us. Quote, when it comes to video, you're not gonna find a more versatile camera. I do a lot of gimbal work, and this camera gives me all the capability of a mirrorless sized body, but the features of a cinema camera. Built-in ND filters, high quality audio, and tools like false color, and unlimited recording formats, DGO, and the incredible RF mount make this camera the ultimate setup. Thanks for taking the time to tour with us today here in Yendi. There's lots more we could have shown you today, but we wanted to provide you a short overview of some of the main areas, as well as some of the work to be done here. If you have questions, if you have thoughts, 
Canon knocked it out of the park with this camera and it'll fit into many, so many workflows. So let's talk about the price uh, point in terms of comparison. So if this is 5,500, the a Sony a7S III is 3,598. The EOS R5 is $38.99. So at a roughly two grand more, why would I invest in this camera? So Sony's not that interesting to me because I want to stick with those RF lenses. It has the ability to shoot for unlimited time and not overheat and has 4K 120. So I don't think slow-mo is going to be something that I'll use in the narrative storytelling sense in the short film projects I have coming up. I do love that for B-roll and commercial shoots and video uh, product videography. So it's definitely interesting for commercial work. Of course, it has its compact size. It has the mini uh, XLR audio inputs, the built-in ND filters. Uh, we talked about the time code uh, input and output, the dual pixel CMOS autofocus with touch autofocus and face detection. So there's something very interesting to me to there as you're working on these film projects. Uh, I think autofocus is something I may rely on. I've heard people generally go with manual focus, but to be honest, I'm at the beginning stage of my filmmaking career with these narrative films, and I might want to rely on autofocus. It also has auto ISO and gain control and a full range of other things. For example, dual card slots. We already talked about the high frame rate. It has, um, it has LUT support. It has Canon Log 2, 3, PQ and HLG recording it looks amazing. So the other thing that's really appealing to me is the compact size. I think when I picture myself doing these short films, I'm working in a kind of run and gun situation on public transportation. For example, one of the scenes in the opening of the screenplay I'm working on is on a bus, so I have to be on the bus with the actress. So this is a type of setup that would allow me to do that. So I want something light, something that's nimble, and I'll have to work around the lack of stabilization. So whether that's the Ronin-S and mounting it on that, or sort of top, uh, sort of handheld like a top handle, which it comes with, by the way. It comes with a top handle and it's got a mic holder unit, battery pack, battery charger, shoulder strap, and body cap. You get those pieces with it. So I think that I would probably be in a situation that I might use the top handle solely, but I also might use it with the Ronin-S. All right, so in summary, it's got the Super 35 sensor from the C300 Mark II. It's got 9.6 megapixels. That's 4206 by 2280. Captures Cinema 4K ultra high def without scaling. And then 4K is in 10 bit and up to 120 frames per second. There's no recording limit. It has vents and active cooling, so it's not gonna overheat. And that's the first Cinema EOS uh, camera to use the RF lens mount. So it's interesting. I'm intrigued by this. I'm definitely gonna keep my eye on it. I'm going to be running this and testing it out soon, so keep your eye open. You can find me on Instagram at West Creasel Photo. Let's connect there. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, subscribe if this was helpful. Every week I do uh, two videos, uh, one on Canon, one on Fuji, so stay tuned if you want more of this content. Subscribe.